Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. We are gonna test some new makeup today. I'm especially excited to try out these new Too Faced palettes that I got in the mail. These are the new Born This Way, like little mini palettes. The original Born This Way is still one of my favorite neutral palettes from the brand. So I have a few other new things I wanted to try as well, and I thought we could just do a fun testing new makeup. So let's go ahead and get started. So I saw that Super Goop came out with a SPF skin tint and I was really intrigued to try it out. I have been liking more skin tints here and there, but I'm assuming since it has like a high dose of SPF, SPF 50, that I probably shouldn't use a primer with this because then I feel like my skin won't really get most of the SPF benefits. So I'm hoping this won't be too glowy. Since I do have oily skin, I try to use more of a mattifying primer. So we're gonna try this without a primer and see how it goes. Now my skin, it's not looking its greatest. So I do wanna cover up some of these red spots that I have lately because I've just had some really bad hormonal acne. And what I've been liking to do is actually use a corrector instead of a normal concealer on my blemishes. I find that this covers them way better and my favorite corrector is the one from Sigma. I think they're actually doing a really good sale right now. It's like their semi-annual sale and I think this is also included so I'll have the details down below if you guys want to check out their sale but this corrector is really good. I have the light to medium tone and I do take the darker shade of the palette and I will apply this over my blemishes. I just feel like having it that slightly deeper tone covers it even better. Just It covers so well so I usually will apply this and kind of blend it out and then I pat a little powder on top of that and you can see if that fixes the problem which most of the time it does um, and if it's not still completely covered I'll go in with another layer on top but that usually does a pretty good job at covering all of that up now let's go into this tint here so this is supposed to be effortless blendable skin tint with powerful sun protection a barely there feel and light coverage so this supposed to be pretty light i feel like super goop is one of the best selling sunscreen lines on the market i'm just gonna put a little bit on my hand i have the shade 14 N in this. You could probably blend this with your fingers if you want, but I am a brush girl, so I always use brushes. My favorite one in particular is this BK Beauty 101 brush. So off the bat, I'm liking how this feels, and it's definitely a very light coverage, because yeah, I can definitely see through with this one and see my skin underneath, so it's definitely not one that's going to add a lot, but it just might be good for evening things out and when you want to have some SPF on with a little bit of coverage for redness which is what I struggle with because sometimes when I'm like in a rush I'm going out the door I don't want to put on a full face of makeup I just want to get out the door as soon as possible <laughs> so like if you ever see me in public I probably have very minimal makeup on but I usually like to have some type of tint on because I do have a lot of pink and red tones in my skin so something like this that just covers it up a little bit is nice, but if it's gonna be like a special occasion where I'm wanting to look extra and more glam, then I'd probably definitely go for something with more coverage. But overall, I feel like this looks really nice on the skin, evens things out quite a bit, and it blended really good. It just kinda looks like my skin, but better. Next, we're gonna move on to eyeshadow. So I did receive both of the Too Faced little mini palettes, the Warm, Ember Nudes in the Cold Smolder Nudes. I was super interested in this more cool tone palette. You guys know I love my cool tones, but I did want to do some swatch comparisons. This Warm Ember Nudes definitely looks more like the original. These do have kind of that soft matte feel on the packaging, and they have a little plastic piece here that kind of clips open, so it snaps shut, which is kind of nice. But this is the shades in the Warm Ember Nude. So it definitely leans more pinky, rosy, and neutrals, which is very similar to the Natural Nudes palette. And I was wondering if these would be the same shades, but they do have different shade names. And I did swatch them next to each other. And I found that the shades were slightly similar, but they were just 
different and like some were lighter some were deeper and I found that the older formula has a little bit more glitter to them but overall they felt similar to how the Born This Way palette usually is where it has almost those kind of wet feeling shimmers and the matte seemed super smooth so it seems like it's a pretty similar quality to the original Born This Way palette which is one of Too Faced best and then the cold shoulder nudes this is something totally different for them Too Faced doesn't do a ton of cool tones so I was really interested to try this one I think this is the one we're going to use on the face today the swatches look really great so I'm excited so I'm going to use my singe brushes which are from Angelica Nikvist uh, she created this amazing brush line. I love her eye brushes and she actually just celebrated her one year anniversary of starting Singe which is so exciting but let's dive into this cool matte brown here. It's like a nice mid-tone called Driftwood. There is a bit of powder kick up in the pan so let's see how this blends out. I do like uh, the Singe brushes because they're a bit on the smaller side and easy to do some detail work with. This is the EO2. It seems to blend out pretty good. Let's do this side here. Definitely I would say it has good pigmentation and these mattes do remind me of the regular Too Faced Born This Way formula which Too Faced always has all these different formulas going on, but the ones in the Born This Way palette have always been the best, in my opinion. Next, using the EO6 brush, I'm going to go into the darker brown in the palette. This one's called Cold Shoulder, and we're going to place this here in the outer corner. This palette definitely has the same smell as the Born This Way Sunset Strip. If you guys remember that one, that was the second one they came out with. It's kind of a strong perfumey smell. The original doesn't have that strong scent, so I'm not really sure why they decided to do that. It's not my favorite scent because, yeah, it just smells like perfume. Going back into this mid-brown, same brush, I'm going to kind of smoke this along the lower lash line. And then just adding a little bit of that darker kind of brownish gray on top for some added depth. Next for shimmer here, I'm going to go into this kind of bronzy one. It's super smooth. This one is Show Off. And I'm going to place this pretty much all along the lid here. Very beautiful. And I'm loving this more cool toned color scheme from Too Faced. Because yeah, like I mentioned earlier, this is something they just don't do that often. I'm taking the Singe EO1 brush and going into this more champagne color and kind of just placing a little bit of that in the very inner section. These just, they apply much better with the finger, I will tell you that. This one has a little more glitter to it. But yeah, I wish these applied better with a brush because it's so hard to get my finger into the very inner portion. But I just wanted to brighten that just a bit. So here's what we are looking like. I think this definitely created a really nice, easy, smoky look. You can definitely make it a little more cool if you use this shimmer on the lid, but I feel like right now it's pretty neutral, but a lot of other Too Faced palettes lean very warm. So I think this is a nice difference to have. So I'm gonna clean this up a bit with some concealer, but first I'm actually gonna use this corrector. I picked this up at Sephora the other day. I was gonna wait for the Sephora sale coming up, but I was worried this is gonna sell out because my store was already out of the pink one, which I really wanted, but I decided to go for the pale sun shade, which is like a very strong yellow. Um, Cause sometimes I feel like maybe the pink might be too bright where it's not gonna actually cover my dark circles. So I figured that I would pick this up to try. I did use it once the other day and it actually seemed really nice. I used it by itself with just a skin tint going out yesterday. And I thought it looked really good. It does look a little crazy right now because it's very yellow, but it does kind of neutralize any blue tones or any purple darkness, which I think is helpful because I feel like I've been struggling having such dark circles and puffy under eyes. But you can see, like, I feel like that helps a lot. And it does offer some coverage with being a really nice thinner formula. It's not really heavy, but I feel like that definitely brightens things and it really just like blends out really nicely and just kind of blends with the skin. It doesn't look overly yellow once you blend it out. So I've been liking this so far and you can use it on its own or underneath concealer. So I might try, 
I might try it underneath today to see how that goes. The concealer I've been really liking lately is the Laura Mercier Real Flawless. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of this on top. But I honestly think that the brightener, it does a good enough job on its own. But I just want to see how these wear together. This is another nice thinner formula concealer. But it's nice just to have that corrector underneath to cancel out those tones. And then I feel like your concealer will do a better job at covering and erasing some of those dark circles. So that actually looks really flawless, really good underneath the eyes. Very bright, I would say. I always set with a powder too. I'm just going to set my under eyes and then we'll set the rest of my face. I just did my brows and I'm just going to apply some Milani Anti-Gravity Mascara here. I don't think I'm going to do a lash today. Since we have, sometimes when I wear skin tint, I don't like to do like a lash. Just because I want it to be a little more natural. But this Milani mascara has been a favorite of mine for, I think it's been out like a year now. Ever since it came out last year, I have absolutely loved it. It's such a good one. I'm also adding just a little bit of brown eyeliner on my waterline here. Next product we're going to use today. I did cave and buy the new YSL bronzer. I really wanted to try it out. I thought the packaging was really pretty. Curiosity got the best of me with this one. It's called the All Hours Hyper Bronze. Look at this packaging. I have the eyeshadow palettes in this kind of tufted leather packaging as well. Oh, they're so beautiful. So this is just pure luxury. I got the shade number two, which looks like this. Oh, I'm excited to try this one. I actually got this at Nordstrom. I don't know if it's available on Sephora or not. I'll have to check, but this feels really nice and weighted. The color looks nice as well. Let's do a swatch. It feels nice and soft on the skin. It looks like it runs pretty warm. So it's a it's very warm bronzer, it looks like. I usually prefer something a little bit more neutral, so we'll see how I like this. So I'm going to use the BK Beauty 103 brush and just go ahead and dip in. Okay, so it actually is a nice, soft, natural color, which is good. I was worried that it would be too much and just look orange on the cheeks, but it's actually very soft so this is kind of a nice just like natural color for me sometimes I overdo it with bronzer I feel like I say that a lot but I do go a little too crazy sometimes because I don't have the most prominent cheekbones so I feel like I don't know my face shape it's hard to contour or bronze up because I just feel like I don't know I just kind of put it all all over you know I do like that I think that looks nice I think it looks nice and natural what do you guys think? I think it's a soft enough color. And the formula, honestly, it feels luxury. It feels very easy to blend and really smoothing. So I think this might be a winner. I've been really liking a lot of YSL's products as of lately. Sometimes after bronzer, I'll just kind of like take my powder brush and just diffuse those edges a little bit. And I do that like when I'm done with my blush as well. For blush, I actually recently went to Ulta to grab this. This is from Polite Society. I talked about this in a purchase or pass that I was really interested in trying these blushes from them. They're called Polite Pops Powder Blush Sticks. And they are supposed to be a cream to matte formula, which I really like for my oily skin. This is what they look like. They're so cute. I feel like this brand is not talked about very often here, but they do have some good products. So let's, let's hope that this one's going to be a good one too. This is in the shade Paris, which I'll swatch for you. This one was the one that was selling out the most but it does feel like a cream to matte for sure. So I just got a bunch of the product on this BK 107 brush and let's go ahead and apply. Ooh, okay. So this also has a nice soft finish. It doesn't seem to be messing up our foundation either and it definitely feels like it dries pretty much to a powder finish, which is good. Cause yeah, I don't really like cream blushes that have such a glowy finish on the skin because it usually just does not last for me. But this is applying really nicely with a brush. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually really liking how this looks so far. I think it honestly, I think that looks really good. I like this color a lot. It's a nice kind of neutral, slightly rosy tinted pink. 
Let's add just a little bit of highlight to this look as well. It's completed. I can't believe I have not tried these yet. I'm so late to the game, but I have like a huge box of products that I'm behind on that I need to try. This is from an indie brand called What's Up Beauty that does make some really gorgeous eyeshadow palettes, but they also came out with these beautiful highlighters that have little imprints on them. This is the Serengeti highlighter in Safari Sunset. So I'm just kind of dipping into the champagne and the pink together. And I just want to add a little glow to this look since we did use all pretty much matte products. Ooh, wow. That is stunning. It does offer a little bit more of a, I would say a golden sheen, but it sits really nicely, I would say, on the skin. Like it just kind of blends right in and doesn't sit on top or cause a streak. It just adds a little bit of a nice glow. Yeah, I should have tried these sooner because that is such a nice formula. So beautiful. Now, YSL sent over a few of their new Love Shine. This is the High Shine Carrying Lipstick, which I've been dying to try. It's supposed to be similar to like their lip gloss balms that they had. So I'm curious, but I am going to go ahead and line my lips first here. I'm just using the Huda Honey Beige Lip Liner. And I'm just going to kind of smooth that out onto the lips. This first one is number 44. These look so beautiful. I can never get over YSL's packaging. Ooh, that's nice. Here's what that one looks like. That might be a top contender to use. This is shade 211. Ooh, this one's very bright. That's actually very pigmented. A slight bright red. This is number 200. This looks like a nice nude. Ooh, yes, we love that. That is gorgeous. I love a light nude like that. And lastly, I have 202, which is their peachy glow, it's called. Oh, not what I expected for the name. Oh, that's beautiful. I love these darker berries like that. That is so stunning. I'm really not sure what the difference is between these and the candy glaze. They look so similar. I think the candy glaze might be even more glossy though than these are. They truly feel like a gloss in a lipstick form while these feel more just like a shiny lipstick. But it says it's wet shine that quenches your thirsty lips with dripping hydration leaving juicy wet shine. So maybe it's supposed to actually be more hydrating than the other ones too. But mm, for color, I think I want to use this one, which is the Peachy called 202. This just looks stunning. I did see these were on Sephora, so they are available for the Sephora sale. But they do feel very just like nice and slippery on the lips. This does look beautiful. I would say definitely not quite as glossy as the candy glazes, but... If you're looking for just something of a shiny lipstick that feels more hydrating on the lips, then these are nice. I would say for me, I'm probably not going to buy any deeper shades than this because it's a little messy, I would say, on the lips. And for me personally, when it comes to a darker color, I usually go for more of a matte formula. But for light colors like this, uh, this is beautiful. But for something a little more medium like this or a light shade, I'm all about it. I'm all about a nice, juicy, wet looking lip. So these are pretty, but I think I honestly might prefer the candy glazes a little bit more. So here's our finished look so far. I would say most of these products seem to be really good based on first impression, but I'm excited to let you guys know my thoughts after I wear this a bit longer today. So I'm gonna come back and I'll let you guys know kind of my thoughts on everything included. We'll see how these products hold up on my more combo oily skin. All right guys, I am back. It has been about almost eight hours now with this full face on. I'm really surprised about this skin tint so far. I thought this was gonna be really glowy by the end of the day, because usually I do have a bit more oil. Of course, I did set my face as per usual, but we didn't even use a primer and it looks it looks pretty good I would say I mean it is a lighter tint so it's not going to be as noticeable if it does wear off I would say I'm only looking just like a little bit dry down here where I had some extra concealer going on from my blemishes 
but everywhere else I feel like it looks pretty good I can't wait to try this a bit more but so far this might be a new favorite just like go to skin tint with some SPF when I just want a little tiny bit of coverage obviously if you're wanting a bit more coverage this is probably not the one for you there is other skin tints that have a little bit more coverage than this but I'm just impressed by how well that looks on the skin as far as the eyeshadow goes I realize I've been calling this the cold shoulder nudes it's the cold smolder nudes <laughs> that is too funny but yeah cold smolder this is looking really good as well still there is no creasing I do have a little bit of kind of fading here in movement in just the corners of where my eyes kind of crease up a little bit with the eyeshadow but there's no creasing which is great because sometimes some other Too Faced palettes I've had crease on me within a few hours so it seems to be holding up quite well and honestly I like these I think they're maybe a little bit expensive for what it is it is in that $30 price point which with Too Faced I just noticed that they do price their stuff a little bit higher and then they have sales a lot like on their website or a lot of their stuff ends up going half off a few months like after release so it's a little bit expensive I think for a six pan I would have maybe liked to see this at maybe a $22 price point or $20 price point instead of the $30 but overall I thought this was good. It's something a little different for Too Faced. I did get quite a bit of compliments when I had this on on my Instagram stories and it performed well. So, I mean, it's good quality, but yeah, I just think it's just a little bit expensive, but I'm still, I'm excited about it. I kind of wish they would do a full cold smolder palette instead of just the mini. Now, I'm really impressed that our cheek products have held up today because I feel like a lot of, let's say, cream blushes especially always fade away. And this is, this is staying really well, which I think that cream to powder matte is definitely kind of helping longevity here. It looks almost just as good as when we first applied it. I thought this formula was nice, especially if you have oily skin and you prefer just that cream to powder kind of finish. You want to play with the creams, but you don't want it to be too glowy where it wears off throughout the day. This is a really nice long wearing cream blush product. I think this is really awesome. I would definitely consider picking up another shade. And our bronzer too has held up very nicely. I was a little bit worried about it in the beginning when we swatched it if it was going to end up being too orange but you know it's it's really nice I feel like it feels luxurious the packaging is so luxe as well so when I am paying a little bit more for a luxury brand I like to see really nice packaging and just that luxury feel and performance so I think this really hits all the marks for me I really like this as well and I think it's a nice natural shade and it seems to last on the skin blends out like butter I think the one thing though that I'm just kind of Eh, about is actually these YSL lipsticks which is really surprising I thought I was gonna like these more obviously it has completely faded off my lips right now let me just go ahead and apply this is number 200 it's too slippery it's too slippery of a formula where you're gonna put it on it's just gonna immediately come off in about 20 minutes it does not last very long I didn't feel like my lips felt hydrated after it wore off either they actually felt quite dry I personally think if you want something a little more shiny I would go for the candy glaze I have been impressed with these I'll show you them side by side this is the love shine you can kind of see the shine level here and the candy glaze they're just like a lot more glossy and thicker and more pigmented so they're just they just wear longer on the lips than these love shine ones do you can see there just like how glossy and it's a thicker non-sticky formula these last much longer on the lips so I would say skip the new love shines get the candy glaze instead even though they don't have as much shades these just seem a lot better to me if I'm gonna be paying a lot for a lipstick I don't want it to wear off in 20 minutes you know so I, I don't know those really I thought were going to be better but they're just they're too thin they're too slippery do they have some nice colors yes but the candy glazes from them are just so so much better to me so i think that is everything that we tried out today oh i forgot the highlight too this one from what's up beauty so beautiful on the skin i feel like it's still there it's not quite as bright as when we first put it on of course but this was such a pretty formula it's so soft and silky on the cheeks i was really impressed with that as well a lot of winners in today's video which i love that um of course 
course I'm gonna be testing these a few more times and I've been doing these like hit and miss videos uh, like speed reviews basically where I'll kind of go over everything after I've used it multiple times and kind of update you but it seems like my only kind of letdown was really the new YSL lipstick so that is I would say pretty good I'm really really happy about these Too Faced palettes too because I know they can be very hit or miss sometimes but these seem like real winners but I would definitely see if you can maybe snag them on a deal for sure but that's gonna be it for this video today thank you guys so much for watching I'll have most of these products linked in the description box let me know if you guys have tried any of them what your thoughts are and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys